So I've been running around for a couple hours. Uh, I got some metal for the uh, swing outs. Got a bunch of new Subaru parts, which I'm super hyped about. I got some little boxes that I'm gonna mount up on the swing aways. I think they'll be absolutely perfect. They were super cheap as well. So I'm gonna show you guys all these new parts that I got and what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna mount everything. So I got all new bolts for all of the cam pulleys, all of the pulleys for my uh, timing components. Um, I got, I can't believe I put it together without this last time. So this is a cover for um, like a little guide for the belt, it goes around the crankshaft, it's for a manual transmission Subaru. So I got this, I got the bolts for that. This stuff's super cheap too. Factory Subaru parts are cheap. They are dirt cheap. I got seals. This is for the uh, power steering reservoir. They always seem to leak. So I got two of them. This is for the dipstick to go into the oil pan. Uh, I got a bunch of these just random seals from Subaru, which uh, well, you can see one right here. This one goes around the water pump and there's several others that go around the timing uh, covers and it's just, just random seals that um, I figured I'd buy because I was there. Got longer bolts. This is for the updated uh, tensioner bracket, which the part number is right there. So this updated one, I mean, you can see that this boss for this eight mil bolt goes all the way down. This one stops, that's the old one. So you can also tell this uh, thread right here has like a reinforcement and then that this whole side has a reinforcement as well. That one has none. And if you flip it over, same deal. It has a bunch of reinforcements right here and this one has nothing. So I don't know why they beefed this up. I'm guessing maybe these were breaking. I've never seen one broken. I've done a lot of timing belts and seen a lot of Subarus, but uh, I guess that was a problem. So they updated it. You can't even buy this piece anymore. It automatically redirects you to this one. An easy way to tell is to look, you can see this while the engine's all put together and you can tell that the bolts, you know, this one goes all the way to that surface. This one doesn't even come close, maybe a little bit more than halfway. So had to get that after I did some research and saw it. Uh, thermostat, water pump, timing belt kit. I got all kinds of stuff. So I'm super hyped to put all this stuff together. New bolts for everything and new parts that this thing should run freaking great for another 100,000 miles. So I went to Harbor Freight and bought these. These are the uh, 1800, which is the smallest one they have. So I'm gonna mount these on my swingaways under the uh, bike carrier. It'll also fit with the uh, with the hitch attachment. So I'm gonna take all this foam out and it'll give me a decent little uh, storage, especially two of them. I did get some aluminum and steel from Allro, which them guys are awesome. This order was wrong. I do recommend when you go to a steel place like this and you get material to write down, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna write down exactly what I need and like on a little piece of paper and I'm gonna just give it to them. I don't be like, here, this is what I need. Like this is the length, this is the diameter, this is the wall thickness, and there will be no confusion. Because when I was trying to describe what exactly I needed, there's so many different pieces of material there and lengths and widths and just, it's hard to keep track of what exactly you want, especially when the guys probably dealt with several customers earlier today and it's just, it's hard to do. So next time I go, I'm gonna have, like I said, a little piece of paper, a description of what I need. So this piece of steel, I originally wanted half by three quarter and this is three quarter by three quarter. This will work completely fine. It's just bracing. It's just like brackets to hold these up. So this is perfectly fine. And I only wanted one of these, but they gave me two. And I thought about it on the drive home. I was like, this is way too much aluminum. So I only needed one and I got twice as much, which I'll eventually use regardless. But still, it just, it would have been easier if I would have gave him my exact like request and then he could have just got it and there would have been no confusion. So there's a chance of rain today for the rest of the day. So I'm not gonna mess with my swing outs and my timing stuff is kind of on hold too. Still need to print my cam seal and crank seal uh, installation little sleeves that I'm making. So I need to design them and I've been meaning to design them, but I edit these videos and it's like three, four in the morning by the time I get done editing these videos. So I haven't really had a chance to make them up. Since there's a chance of rain outside, we're not gonna work on the swing outs. I moved the table inside and we're gonna work on this panel. I've been meaning to do this for weeks. So what we got here is the side panel to my van. It was originally wrecked on this side. I'll come out here and show you guys. So this whole panel on this side was wrecked. And I noticed also when I took off the trim piece that it was missing one of the uh, clips. So you can see here, it was uh, pulled out, them little spots 
with the hammer side hammer I did cut this out because there was some rust and we also fixed a dent that was here this is all kind of rough looking under here because you can't see any of it so it doesn't really matter but um, I did order up some new cladding clips because I'm missing one and also you can't really see it but right here it was welded there's a new panel that was put in I mean years ago so the original trim piece which is the one in here is kind of still like suffering a little bit I mean there's cracks cracks all up there most importantly these are gone so this one is still there but it's about ready to fall off this one's gone and obviously more cracks cracks that's cracked all the way so I'm gonna beef this thing up I got a bunch of fiberglass mat I got some resin hopefully it's enough it's probably like a little bit less than half hardener and I did beef up this bracket because none of these were fit were uh, able to be like fixed and mounted so there was two of these tabs and I basically joined them together so when this clamped it would cover more of a surface area I did that um, I made these a couple weeks ago and I'm gonna grind some of that out and I'm gonna mount, mount these up and I'm gonna glass over them to hold it in place and it's basically gonna mimic that mount and I'll be able to mount these on all spots all original mounting locations so we're gonna straighten this thing up fix it make it a little bit beefier I whipped these up out of aluminum and I welded all on these a bunch because that will provide an uneven surface so the mat and the resin will be able to grab and bite onto this So fast forward a couple hours and I got this whole surface all prepped and I just used this little carbide burr on my Dremel, pretty rough, and that just pretty much uh, gives it a good texture and I also ground down them spots which I needed to because I mean for one they were gone and for two that's where the new little tab is going to be up, sticking up like that so this is the original tab that is stock and this is exactly what I need to duplicate so here is the cladding piece that this whole thing clips on so that end goes up in there like that and then this you know matches there and basically the bolt goes through and you can tighten it up and it secures itself this surface is even with this little ridge so what I need to do is I need to get this straight piece of steel bump it up against you know that's bumped up against there there and then this needs to match on this surface so I'm coming up a little bit short and it's coming up short because this is raised and that's just a part of the body line and that's kind of just how it is I got this it's four millimeters thick and I'm gonna cut this and basically make a spacer for this so it doesn't bottom out and raise this thing up on that little edge see how it's raised up that's not raised up so I don't want that I don't know I just feel like that shouldn't be up in the air like that so I want this flat and yeah I need to add a spacer in there so I cut out them two little spacers that are on that side of the uh, piece of angle got the clamp holding it and I'm gonna weld on each side just to hold them there and that will space this thing back so it's not up on this little ridge here's a piece all finished it was kind of sketchy using that saw like that but it just works so well and so fast so that's the uh, tack I didn't prep this aluminum at all I just kind of went for it figured it would be fine these just need to be held in place while it's apart once it's together these will be clamped and yeah these are just to hold it so what I'm gonna do I got them marked and I figured out my measurement by there's a little clip right there so I measured the peak of that to the peak of that one which is essentially the center to center and it came out to be 39 centimeters on each one like exactly all the math that I have is cut up in little pieces looking good huh kitty so this is what we got there's a couple layers of uh, that mat on there. They're all squared up. They're the exact measurement that I want apart from each other. 
They're just starting to set up. So it's not that cold out right now. So it's 46 Fahrenheit, uh, 12 Celsius out right now. And this stuff does not want to set up at all. I'm mean, getting that heat gun and warming up this plastic. Oh, that's definitely warmer than it is out here. And it's finally starting to set up. This stuff was sitting here for a long time and it just wasn't doing anything. And I want to get these to set up a little bit before I move this and, you know, pack up for the night because I don't want to move it around. And if I wouldn't have got the heat gun, honestly, these things probably would have took hours to dry. So this stuff says 75 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which is probably like 25 Celsius. So it is a little bit cold out right now, but I didn't realize it was that like dependent on the weather. So I'm gonna keep on heating it up with that heat gun and uh, hopefully get this stuff to set up real quick. They're looking good. They're looking so solid. Gosh, these things are freaking beefy. Look at that poor thing. So that's what it's supposed to look like. But it's just a little tab, I don't know, maybe four millimeters wide. So this thing is aluminum and it's held in all the way up there. And that resin is hard as a rock. And that one had to be short because there was a little uh, mold, like raised piece right there. But that's still, that's fine. So this is how the original bracket goes in. It goes in on the top first. Down here it just locates. Perfect. A little bit of back and forth. That is so perfect. Gosh, that is awesome. So it's about 1.30 and I think I'm gonna wrap it up. It's uh, pretty late and I still need to edit this video. My schedule has been so out of whack. I've been staying up till like, well tonight will definitely be four. Um, last night my dad was getting ready for work and I was still up and I slept till about one. So maybe uh, within the next like week, I'll try to kick this whole schedule back, like at least like two hours. Like I can, I can stay up till 2 a.m. That's not that big of a deal, but four is a lot. So uh, I'm gonna get these bikes in here and tomorrow we'll be able to do a lot. I got a lot of stuff to do. It could go any direction. So uh, stick around <laughs> and see which way I go. <laughs>